from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a donation from the estate of Jose de Medeiros. This Mass is offered in memory of Jose, Maria, and Elizabeth de Medeiros. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Andrew, apostle and brother of St. Peter. St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland and Russia, as well as of the Greek Orthodox Church. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church, a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to, be, to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news but not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have. For their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. The word of the Lord. Day 
today pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Their message goes out through all the earth. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel contains a brief account of the invitation extended by Jesus to the brothers, Peter and Andrew, both fishermen, to become his disciples. If they join with him, he says, he will make them fishers of people. The image points forward to the role that they and the other apostles will play in the origin and early expansion of the church the decisive factor in whether or not individuals become Christians and members of the church is faith, faith in God, faith in Jesus as the Messiah and Son of God, faith too in the forgiveness and reconciliation that have been won for us by Christ. As St. Paul once put it, Jesus was handed over to death for our sins and was raised for our justification. The apostles were, above all, preachers and teachers, missionaries who proclaimed the gospel, the good news of salvation, in various cities, towns, and countries around the Mediterranean and further east. It was their preaching and the preaching of others who joined with them in their task that called the church into being and enabled it to grow. In today's first reading, taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, the Apostle emphasizes the important role of preachers and teachers in the life of the church. Given that salvation requires faith, how, he asks, is a person to believe in someone of whom they have never heard? If, however, people are to hear, hear about Jesus and about the meaning of his life for us, someone must speak to them. But for someone to do that, 
they must be entrusted with the responsibility and authority to do so. Paul sums up his argument this way. So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes ultimately from the word of Christ. The word apostle comes from a Greek word meaning someone who is sent. The original sending of the apostles by the risen Jesus to preach the gospel continues in the life of the church. It is the responsibility not only of deacons, priests, and bishops, but to different degrees and in different ways of all believers. Just as the church was initially called into existence by the preaching of the word, so it continues to live and to be renewed by its ongoing proclamation. The vocation of all believers, like that of the apostles, is to bear witness by word and example to the good news of salvation. As important, however, as the spoken word is, by itself it is not enough. Many people in the past and today have heard and read about Jesus, but do not respond to him in faith. For that something more is needed, more than simply interest in and goodwill. St. Paul once put it this way, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Christian faith in the full sense of the word requires both a spoken or written word that comes to us from without and an inner transformation of the heart. Paul identifies this inner transformation with the working of the Holy Spirit within us. The Spirit puts us, as it were, in tune with God and with Christ, so that when we hear about them, a positive response is awakened in our heart. We recognize the truth of what is being said to us and embrace it in faith. St. Augustine, in his long and often winding journey to faith, gradually found his earlier objections to the gospel message overcome. But even then, he was unable to commit himself. That only became possible when he realized his need for God's healing and renewing presence in his heart, his need for what he came to identify as God's grace. The word grace means a gift, something freely given. Over the centuries, it came for many Christians to stand for the gift of the Spirit, that God-given source in us of faith and hope and love. To speak of grace is to speak both of the graciousness of God turned to us in Jesus and of the transforming power in us of the Spirit. Advent celebrates the threefold coming of Christ in the past, the present, and the future. We recall his coming some 2,000 years ago, his future coming at the end of time, and his coming here and now into our hearts and into our world. As much as the word advent puts the emphasis on the coming of Christ, it also implies that we have to put to be, we have to do our part in order to prepare for his coming. We know how important preparations are for our own Christmas celebrations. The choosing of gifts, the going to parties of various kinds, the welcoming of guests into our home, a special meal. Such things require time and effort time that we often feel we don't have, an effort that can sometimes be extremely taxing. Not surprisingly, our preparation for the coming of Christ also demands an effort, an effort of mind and heart. The liturgy of Advent is full of wonderful texts, 
evoking the hopes of Israel's prophets, the life of Jesus, the preaching of the apostles, and our hope one day to share in eternal life with the risen Christ. In order for these texts to bear their intended fruit in us, we have to approach them with the right disposition. For that, we need to ask God to pour out his spirit, his grace on us. Ask him to give us a mind and heart that will resonate with and respond to the mystery of his graciousness turned to us in Christ. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that we will remain faithful to the witness and teaching of the apostles, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. With the intentions of our donors and of all those who have written and phoned in asking for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For a greater commitment on the part of governments and individuals all around the globe to the care of our common home, the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For doctors, nurses, and everyone else involved in health care, that they may be renewed in their commitment to their patients, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mingling of this water and wine become partakers of his divinity, we became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for peace by Pope Pius XII. Almighty and eternal God, may our grace enkindle in all of us a love for the many unfortunate people whom poverty and misery reduce to a condition of life unworthy of human beings. Arouse in the hearts of those who call you Father a hunger and thirst for justice and peace and for fraternal charity in deeds and in truth. Grant, O Lord, peace in our days, peace to souls, peace to families, peace to our country, and peace among nations. Amen. Let us pray. May communion in your sacraments strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. <laughs>